Hey, I need your help to make a video. I'm making a video with five tips for a new ham. To help them communicate better with their handheld radios. All right, perfect. I'll go get my radio. These are the five most common mistakes that new operators make, making it hard for the rest of us to understand you and what you're trying to say. Tip number one is probably the most important tip, and that is getting close to the microphone and letting people be able to hear what you're trying to say. All right, I'm ready to go. Now, we're not going to be using a specific frequency today, and we won't be giving our call sign because, after all, it is a video. Now, if we were doing this on air, you would be wanting to identify at least every 10 minutes. I don't always hear you as clear as I probably could, which means you could do better at improving how you use your radio. I want you to have your face right up against your radio where the microphone is, the hole in the radio, and then you're going to talk to me there. You're going to pull your mouth away a little bit more, maybe an inch away, then three or four inches away, then maybe half a foot away, and then a foot away from your radio. And talk to me at each of these distances. Now, I'm right next to my radio, and I'm talking, I'm touching the microphone, and I'm talking to you now. This is how I would sound to you if I'm talking to you uh, this way. How's this sound? Now I'm talking a little bit farther away, maybe an inch or something like that away from the radio. How is this sounding this way as I'm talking to you away from my radio this way? So now I'm talking probably three or four inches away, and I'm sounding uh, this way to you here as I'm talking. How does this sound? Is it any different than before? This is probably six inches away from me as I'm talking to you now. How does this sound? Is it, is it any different? Is it worse or is it better? I'm talking to you about a foot away. I'm still talking with the same volume as I would. How does this sound? Is this any different for you this way? And I'm just talking straight into the mic, not across it. All right, those are perfect examples of why you should be so close to your microphone. Clearly, being closer to the microphone made all the difference in being able to hear you and making your audio sound great. You mentioned talking into your mic and talking across your mic. That can actually make a big difference. No matter what, if you're talking at the mic, you're like touching the radio, that's going to be a good thing. When you talk directly into a microphone, you're going to get breath sounds. When you're talking your speech, you're going to have wind noise coming into that microphone. So even though your audio will be loud, you will get that distorted kind of a sound. When you talk across your microphone, you know, sideways to it, a lot of those breath noises are going to be gone, but yet your audio will still be loud. All right, here you go. Now I'm, I'm touching the radio. My mouth is directly on the microphone here. Well, I'm not literally touching the plastic, but I'm that close. I can feel it's uh, right there. How does this sound this way? So now I'm talking to you across the microphone instead of directly into it. Is there any difference to it this way? How does this sound? Those were really good examples of why it's important to get close to the microphone when you're talking on the radio. Now, something else that's important, and that is when you're talking on the radio and you're trying to keep your mouth close to the microphone hole, whether it's a, a hand mic or it's a handheld radio or something like that, you want to make sure that your head moves with the microphone. Otherwise, if you turn around to look and you're talking to someone, but your microphone stays in the same spot, you've just lost all the volume in your microphone. If I'm talking to you here, and I'm going this way, and I... I look around to see what's there, and then uh, I look back over here to see what's going on. You mean you didn't hear that as well? So really what you're saying is I need to do this, and as I'm turning this way and looking, and then uh, seeing whatever I have and telling you the volume is not changing during that whole conversation. Is that right? Absolutely. That's the perfect way to do it. And you have to understand that when you're on the other end of your conversation, when it's me that's having to listen to you, and I can't understand what you're saying. It's just not fun to listen to that kind of conversation. And you throw on top of that, I may have road noise from being in a vehicle or in a windy location to begin with. You never know what the other person's having to listen to. They could be in a pristine environment with a beautiful sounding speaker, but more than likely, you're going to be in a vehicle and have road noise. You're going to be outside and have wind noise and traffic and other things. And everything that you can do to help make your voice be heard better is a big deal. All right, got it. Microphone close to the mouth. On to tip number two. Hold that PTT button down while you're talking. Cuts off the first couple syllables of what it is that you're saying. So you want to push that button down and hold it before you start talking. And that's a big deal because if you're a person that really talks super fast and you're saying a bunch of words together, losing a syllable could be important to the conversation. Tip number three. Holding your antenna vertical is a big deal. All other antennas in UHF and VHF 
are going to be mounted and installed in a vertical upright position. And what that means is your radio antenna needs to be straight up and down. And if it's not, not only will it be harder to hear things, your signal is attenuated or reduced, but your power, your transmit power, will be reduced significantly. And you may not be able to make that contact that you're trying to do. All right, so let me try this. I'm going to use my HT with the small little rubber duck on here. It's nothing big. But um, let's try this in a vertical position. All right, how do you hear me now? I'm talking to you this way. Is my signal coming in okay? How do you hear me this way? Now, this would be like a scenario, I guess, that, I don't know, somehow I guess I would hold it horizontally. What does this sound like to you this way? Is it any better or worse uh, this way? And now that you mentioned needing to be vertical, um, there's a lot of times where when I'm using this radio, I'm going to be holding it like this. So it's really at a 45 degree angle. Let me try it this way. Here's the signal here, and I, I could be looking around, and I'm following the microphone with uh, my mouth, but um, the antenna is not straight up and down. Does this affect my signal at all? Perfect examples of how to hold your antenna and maybe not how not to hold your antenna. Now, with the caveat that a gain antenna, a Yagi or something like that, is going to have better signal capability. And once you're connected to an antenna like that, it doesn't matter what position you hold your radio in. But for our purposes today, we're only talking about an HT and a rubber duck that you've got on top of it. Tip number four, power levels. Most handheld radios are going to have power settings of low, medium, and high. And it's important to know how to change those settings because that can make a difference between you making a contact or not. And as a general rule, I feel like it's always best to run high power on your handheld if you're in a bad location or you're traveling somewhere to reach a repeater or the person you're trying to talk to. Now, before you go and set your radio at a low power setting because you want to, just consider the suffering that you might be causing on the other end of people having to listen to that signal. Tip number five, when using a handheld radio, location is everything. If you're in your home and you're listening to a repeater or a signal that's on the opposite end of your house, try getting as close to the right side of the house where that signal might be and even near a window. If you're trying to make a contact in a commercial area, residential area where there's a bunch of cement buildings and a bunch of stuff that will cause interference, try moving to a different location, sometimes two feet in any direction can make the difference of you getting through or not. I have one last bonus tip for you, and that is leave a break between transmissions. If you're talking to someone on a repeater or just a local frequency, giving that break of one to two seconds gives another operator a chance to break in. Now try practicing some of these tips, these techniques in your ham radio operation, and not only will you have a better ham radio experience, but you'll be making people on the other end happy to listen to your transmissions. Make sure you click that like button down below, and if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to get more videos like this one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one.